click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, I welcome you all to this video. We are with chapter 9 of Microwave Engineering. So far in this chapter, we have addressed the microwave transmission. First of all, with the conventional type of the transmission line that it is coaxial line. We got it modified by not having the central conductor, only one conductor that has been surrounding the hollow cavity inside called as a circular waveguide. So for circular waveguide, it was very much clear that the transverse electromagnetic mode is not at all supported. Hence the alternatives transverse electric and transverse magnetic mode were analyzed and the different modes of propagation we have seen so far along with the dominant mode TE11. Now as in the previous videos we have dealt with the modes of propagation then power transmission and solved several problems onto it. Let us address what can be the power losses associated with the circular waveguide and the conventional coaxial transmission line. So here we start with our topic power losses in circular waveguides or coaxial lines. So as we know that the coaxial lines are having a simple structure of two conductors having the same axis. Hence, one inside the another, the name is coaxial here. So let us say this is the central conductor and it is surrounded by the outer conductor. For the both, we have the same axis running through their center like this. So let us imagine this is the Z axis and towards the positive Z direction, there it is microwave propagation. For coaxial transmission line, we have the central conductor as more potential value whereas the outer conductor is at zero potential here. Now when we don't have the central conductor so that time only one conductive transmission line single conductor transmission line we call it is the circular waveguide. Inside the coaxial line the transmission flows with the help of voltage and current waves you can say but inside the circular waveguide in the hollow cavity we have the reflection of microwave from the walls of the waveguide there. So in the form of EH waves we have the microwave propagation. Here the radius we have analyzed with the symbol small a. We have the radius small a for the central conductor small b for the outer conductor. So these are the circular and coaxial transmission lines. See here the two conductors are separated by the dielectric material having the corresponding permittivity epsilon. The value of mu zero can be regarded for the non-magnetic type of the material. Here also the cavity will be characterized by epsilon and mu for the permittivity and permeability of the dielectric medium inside the cavity here. Now, what are the reasons to have power losses? We don't want any of the power content that has been input from one end of the circular waveguide or coaxial transmission line to be lost in between the journey. The 100% should reach the end here. We consider the metallic walls that have been making the circular or coaxial transmission line to be 100% perfect conductor but practically there it is some limitations here. So by practical things we have certain kind of resistance called as surface resistance to the metallic bodies we have been using so far. So corresponding to the surface resistance in both the conductors here there it is the account of we have the skin depth up to which the electromagnetic or microwave can penetrate inside the wall of the metallic type here. So ideally the skin depth should be equal to zero but it is not the case in practical. So the certain extent of impurity of metallic walls we can say or certain extent of 
the impurity of dielectric material if you are having the coaxial transmission line most possibly which is filled with the solid type of the dielectric here we have the air air is a perfect dielectric here of course so because of the impurities here there are the possibilities of having the power losses in this transmission line now extending further the discussion for the ideal type of transmission into the tem mode for the conventional transmission line we have the relation giving the power loss denoted by pl is equal to twice into alpha into capital p suffix tr where capital p suffix tr is nothing but the transmitted power whereas p suffix l is nothing but the power loss per unit length whereas alpha alpha is the attenuation constant measuring the attenuation in terms of neighbors per meter 2 is a constant therefore we have this per unit length power loss here now in general the attenuation constant in terms of the lumped elements from the circuit model here we can obtain as alpha is equal to 1 by 2 in the bracket capital r under root of c by l added with the conductance g in multiplication to the square root of l by c here so as for the propagation we have the relation gamma is equal to alpha plus j times beta of course for propagation the spatial and the time harmonics are been involved in the content of the phase shift constant beta here we have the attenuation accounted into the alpha so it is to be governed by these two equations here and finally leading to the power losses here ideally we want alpha to be equal to zero but practically because of the impurities we can say under manufacturing of the waveguide devices or the transmission line devices we have the power losses by the next lecture we shall be extending our discussion over the microwave transmission with coaxial transmission line and the circular waveguide to see what are the different types of excitation modes for the waveguide so i hope you shall be continuing with us to see the more details and to gain more knowledge of our subject microwave engineering so you can subscribe to ekida for the same thank you